ゲームはプレイステーション時計はシチズン新しい価値ある商品をどんどん安く新宿西口ヨドバシカメラ Breaking news right now, and while details are still unconfirmed, it does appear to be what we all feared. The Earth Defense Force has been deployed to the area and is currently engaged in battle with the enemy. This just in the Earth Defense Force is desperately seeking the help of this local citizen. His bravery and battle tactics were invaluable in defeating the first Ravager invasion in 2017. It is rumored they may be mankind's only hope. If anyone has any information on this individual, please contact the Earth Defense Force immediately. I don't know how much longer we'll be on the air. Let us all hope that the Earth Defense Force prevails. EDF. EDF. It's hard to write a review for a game like Earth Defense Force 2025. On one hand, it's an unadulterated throwback to the over the top arcade style of game popular during the turn of the 21st century. It is a simple, no frill shooter that combines big guns, big action, and even bigger enemies. Earth Defense Force 2025 is so aggressively a video game that it borders on parody. It's loud, it's dumb, it is endlessly fun. On the other hand, you ignore the fact that the game is objectively a technical lemon. There are times where the frame rate dips into single digits and resembles a corporate slideshow more than an interactive piece of digital entertainment. There's clipping everywhere, the enemies have a tendency to get stuck outside of the playable game area, and the shooting feels floaty and disconnected most of the time. On paper, the game is a mediocre third person shooter packed to the gills with a needlessly bloated 700 different weapons and generic enemies. It's not too conceptually different from the popular in Japan Musou style of games made most famous by the Dynasty Warriors series. But to call EDF 2025 a Musou with guns and aliens does a disservice to the core of its experience, and that is to relentlessly shoot the ever loving shit out of spiders and fire breathing space dragons. It's hard to describe the simple joy of engaging with a game that is so over the top, unabashedly juvenile, and achingly earnest in its construction. There's nothing complicated about Earth Defense Force 2025, or any of its exceedingly similar prequels. No complicated story arc, no challenging button combinations, and certainly nothing to get in the way of you leveling an entire city block with explosives simply because you can. Playing EDF 2025 is akin to having a conversation with your eight year old self and asking him or her, You want to shoot space aliens with a big gun? If the answer is anything other than an immediate yes, I advise you to seek counseling. Earth Defense Force 2025 maintains the four playable classes in online cooperative play of the 2011 train wreck Insect Armageddon by Vicious Cycle. However, in the hands of franchise creator Sandlot and their ability to balance goofy seam of your pants gameplay with overwrought o o r a h military bravado, the formula works much better this time. The Ranger is the most basic and easy to use class, and having played two other games in the franchise, Ashley found immediate success with his run and gun style. The other classes, Air Raider, Fencer, and Wing Diver, are quite varied in their particular skill sets and each caters to a specific kind of play. One key difference between the versions is that when it comes to split screen cooperative play, Only the Xbox 360 version supports both online and local split screen. The PS3 version split screen is local only. However, for us, EDF is about playing side by side on our couch in our living room, laughing at the cartoonish ways bug parts explode into the sky, quipping at our NPC soldiers' odd comments about steak and girlfriends, and when it comes time to get a little more serious, strategizing on neutralizing the Ravager threat. It's in the multiple classes where strategizing in EDF 2025 actually becomes fun and rewarding. Rather than something that's strictly required to complete the level. While on normal, the game is rarely too challenging, I do find that my weaknesses as a wing diver are complemented by Ashley's strengths as a ranger. Sometimes it can feel like I'm doing most of the heavy lifting, so that she can run in circles and level half of future Tokyo, but there have been numerous situations in which we would have failed the mission had she not come through with a clutch volley of grenades or revived me from death. EDF's controls are simple and require your partner to essentially know how to press a sum total of three buttons and be able to utilize both joysticks. The overcrowded and chaotic hordes of enemies can be overwhelming at times, and if your co op buddy adopts a spray and pray method of pest extermination, it's entirely possible you'll be caught in the crossfire and headed for a failed mission. But the boisterous and slapstick attitude of EDF makes these setbacks feel relatively minor. Would EDF 2025 be a better game if it ran with a solid frame rate, had a more unique and diverse repertoire of weapons, strayed from recycling the same enemies in locations across 95 grueling stages, and just had a more general coat of polish? Maybe. 
but then it would also probably have a cross-promotional Mountain Dew tie-in and be settled with infuriating microtransactions. Make no mistake, Earth Defense Force 2025 is a flawed game in many ways. The overall pace of the level and weapon progression, the simplistic level of detail in the environments, the dodgy frame rate, and the PS2-era quirky Japanese game ethos that permeates the entire experience is not something I can easily recommend for everyone. Earth Defense Force 2025 is one of those games whose flaws, however large, are dwarfed by its character, its heart, its dedication to a style of game rarely seen anymore, and its promise of delivering an experience you can't quite get anywhere else, blemishes and all. Did he mention the part where you shoot giant robots in the face with lasers? Earth Defense Force 2025 is now available for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. So actually this time we're taking a look at Earth Defense Force 2025. Mm -hmm. uh, we played the PS3 version. Yes. Um, we're no strangers to the series. We're really big fans yes. of it actually. Uh, we've played multiple other games in the series mm -hmm. up to and including the uh, Japanese version of this game. Yes, we have. Um, and for us, it is, you know, the, the equivalent of a big summer blockbuster movie. Yeah. It's big, dumb, loud, goofy video game fun. Yes. Um, it's soldiers shooting bugs in the face. I mean, yes. the review should really just be that sentence alone. Yeah, that's it. Um, it is, as I like to put it, a video game as a video game. Mm -hmm. It wears its video game-ness right on its sleeve. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no doubt what Earth Defense Force no. is. Um, <laughs> But with all that, all those guns blazing, all those bugs flying around, all those robots landing out of the sky, mm -hmm. it can get a little chaotic at times. It definitely can. Yeah. Uh, there's always so much going on. And I know yeah. for me, it can be frustrating when you're, you know, you see a huge nest or something, you're lining up a shot of a rocket ready to go, and out of nowhere, a soldier, a citizen, or a bug leg comes flying <laughs> yeah. into your view, yeah. and you take the shot, and it blows you and it right up. And yeah. It, sometimes it kills you, sometimes it just puts you into the worst position ever. Yeah, um, it's frustrating. It, yeah, absolutely, it can. It's difficult to remember to keep track of where you are, yeah. where I am. Uh, the game does give you maps and does give you little you know, HUD elements to tell you, but bit. you're quite frankly, you're not paying attention no. to those things. No. Um, so it has led to you shooting me in the mm -hmm. face, me shooting you in the face. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we failed missions because of it. Absolutely, but... The game does not make you feel bad for that. Nope. You, you never get angry when you've blown yourself up and you failed no. a mission. It's part of the fun. Yeah. Um, and the game was so easy to pick up and play mm -hmm. that it's, it's, there's no barrier, there's no barrier to entry. Yeah. And I say anybody could just pick it up and have a ton of fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's so much fun. It's a very kind of instant gratification. Yes. I mean, you, you, you pull the, you know, you pull the trigger yeah. and ants are blowing up, spiders are exploding, you know. Stuff is dying. Absolutely. And it looks, it looks awesome, quite yeah. frankly. And that's one of the reasons that you and I kind of treat this as like a... I mean, the word is evergreen, but it's just sort of one of those games where we can always come back to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We don't have to sit through a weekend or a week. There's just so much to do. There's so many levels, so many weapons to, to try out and yeah. see. Uh, and, you know, with the four classes, there's even more variety. Yes. It's one of those games that you and I have played it for 30 minutes. We've oh, yeah. played one level and gone to bed. We've yeah. played it for four hours Absolutely. on a weekend. Absolutely. Um, but because there is so much, mm -hmm. sometimes it can just it can be the same thing over and over. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's 700 weapons. Yeah. But I think for you and I, at least, you pick two that are your favorite and you stick with them. Yeah. You may upgrade a few times, but yeah. out of 700, that's really not that many. Yeah, I mean, quite honestly, a lot of them are, at least for me, and it seems for you, mm -hmm. to be honest, worthless. Yeah. That's not to say that other people wouldn't find use in them, no, but no. you are kind of doing the same thing over and over and over yeah. and over. So after four hours of doing that thing, yeah. it can get a little tiresome. Yeah, a little bit. You know, you just, like I told you, we never really taper off, we just kind of stop. Yeah. You know, oh, it's yeah. just a point where you stop and you're like, I've had enough of the game. Yeah. Um, but I mean, in light of that, in light of the chaos, uh, mm -hmm. these you know these little nitpicks or flaws, the game just has a firmly tongue-in-cheek, self-aware sense of humor. Oh, absolutely! It's it's totally this like Paul Verhoeven, RoboCop, Starship Troopers kind yes. of very obvious like over-the-top military bravado. Yeah. You know the oorah, the the EDF, 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 yeah. all that stuff. All the dumb shit the soldiers say with stakes and girlfriends and making bro dates or whatever. Yeah, I, who knows? I don't know what's going on on the battlefield, but something's up out there. <laughs> yes. um, and one of those things is steak. It's kind of hard to stay mad at the game because yeah, it just yeah. has this quirky, funny, military yeah. meets sci-fi from the 50s 
aesthetic to everything yeah. and it, it ties everything together it's it's smoothed over a lot of the issues the game has yeah i mean and it has it has its fair share of issues a little bit but it's so honest it's so earnest it it's so much a video game that you don't see anymore mm -mm. that it, it's hard to to really harp on any of those issues yeah but for now i mean earth defense force 2025 is i mean it's basically the best game ever made. Absolutely. I mean, it's yes. basically the best that's, game That's ever what made. we're saying. Yeah. And hey, do you have a girlfriend? I forgot my magazine. We should get a steak after this. I forgot my bullets. Roger that. Our soldiers okay. are prepared for any alien threats. The Navy launches ships. The Air Force sends their jets.